What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. Hops are the backbone of your economy in Stellaris. Or are they? In this video, we're going to look at a build which will not require us to have basically any pops working menial resource output jobs. We won't be having any miners, we won't be having any technicians, we won't be having any farmers, nothing like that. We're going to be employing a couple of tricks Paradox don't want you to know in order to get most of our resources from something other than our population, breaking the fundamental game loop in Stellaris. We'll use this newfound economic freedom in order to get 35 to 40,000 fleet power within the first 30 years. That should leave us in a comfortable position to conquer the entire galaxy. And I want to say this doesn't use any exploits or any bugs, this is entirely using intentional features within the game, which makes it even juicier. So let's dive in and look at the empire we're going to play with today in order to conquer the galaxy. The Kevin Multitude are the empire I will use to show off this absolutely crazy build. We're going to be going very, very heavily on the leaders. For that reason, we're going to be taking the experience cash as one of our two starting civics. This is going to make all of our leaders start at plus one level, so they will all start at a minimum level of two. We'll also get the Vault of Knowledge. We can ignore that and we'll probably demolish it later on. We'll get plus one effective counselor skill. As a machine intelligence, that effective counselor skill is a massive boost. That means all of our nodes will be at plus one level, giving us a juicy plus five to our agenda completion speed. So we'll be completing all of our agendas as if we had half an extra node right from the start of the game. On top of that, our cognitive node will get an increase to experience gain as well. For my other civic, I'm going for Rogue Servitor, but you can choose basically anything you'd like. Rogue Servitor is pretty much the most powerful way to play machines outside of possibly going Determined Exterminator or Driven Assimilator. This civic is going to give us some massive boosts to our stability by having very, very happy bio trophies. We'll also get lots and lots of additional unity from those bio trophies, as well as other bonuses beside. It's just really powerful. Because I've gone for Rogue Servitor, I'm going to start off with probably the best origin for Rogue Servitor, which is Prosperous Unification. We'll get an additional four pops and two more starting districts. This is going to give us a massive boost economically right from the start of the game, putting us ahead of any other empires we'll find around us. And those pops won't be working menial jobs like mining or technician jobs for energy, oh no, no, no. They'll be pushed straight into complex jobs, providing actual benefits to our Kevin multitude, such as research and alloys. Now, with this build, you don't have to go for machine intelligence. There is a version of experience cash for hive mind and biological empires. However, machine intelligence has the best chance of rolling the leader traits that we're going to need to roll later on. And that's why I'd recommend you take this for this specific build if you want to maximize those leaders. When we come to the traits themselves, I will go into more detail, but for now, just bear in mind, machine is best, hive is second, and regular biological will be the worst. Jumping over to our species traits on the lovely Kevin here, of course we'll have machine, and mass produce for additional mechanical pop assembly, that's pretty standard. I've gone with logic engines for additional research output, that's pretty normal. And then there's something of a curveball here. I'm going to recommend you take enhanced memory. That's going to give you a minus 25% bonus on leader upkeep, along with a leader maximum negative trait modifier of minus one, so all of your leaders will have less negative traits. Luxurious and high bandwidth are both pretty nice, very minimal in terms of actual cost to our empire. This will mean we spend a few more alloys on building pops and we get slightly larger modifiers from empire sites. Overall, neither of these are going to be too difficult. The main difference here from what I'd say is a normal build is sticking enhanced memory in amongst the trait picks. That's not one we generally see. When it comes to ruler traits, pick basically anything you'd like. Charisma is going to be less helpful than you think. I'd probably recommend going for something like logistics understanding. The very first thing you will get the opportunity to do is pick additional traits for all of your leaders because of that experience cache leveling them all up to level 2. What you want to look for at this point is anything that is a resource trait in a specific priority order. First and most important, I would recommend you get the mineral resource traits followed by alloy or energy resource traits and then anything else. And if you're enjoying this video, please 
Use the mineral extraction subroutine on that like button. Don't forget to level up your nodes as well. They will also be giving you some extra bonuses. Make sure to buy plenty of minerals and alloys from the market. These are the maximums you can get away with without increasing the price. Don't forget to explore out into the galaxy and find more planets for colonization. You will have to spend quite a few alloys in order to build your colony ships as a machine, so don't neglect that. With your first agenda infinite opportunities, you can either fire it early or simply ignore it and swap it out for finding the voice straight away. Both of those options have merit, but once you've triggered it, I would move on to finding the voice, boosting your unity income yet further. That's going to allow you to rush through the traditions. Starting off, you'll want to grab aptitude. That will give us additional leader starting traits. Now, by getting more leader starting traits, we're going to be maximizing the number of leaders at our disposal with resource traits. I think you might be seeing where this build is going. I have quite a bit of leader capacity and I have saved up some additional unity. At this point, I'm going to go out and start hiring leaders that have level one or level two minerals along with other resource traits. The reason that machines are the best for this is because their trait picks for their leaders come from a smaller pool than other empire types. This means they have a higher chance of rolling the resource leader traits, which are honestly kind of broken. That mineral trait that I just picked up, well, the leader cost me 100 unity and will cost three unity upkeep, but I will be gaining 32 additional minerals every single month. If we can stack five or six leaders with this trait, that will completely eliminate our requirement to have any pops working on minerals to have any pops working on minerals for a long, long time. Anytime you see a leader with the prime bot or eager trait, also grab that one. They are basically free because whilst under level four, they do not count towards your overall leader capacity. And we're going to be leveling up all of our leaders, searching for more and more of those juicy, juicy resource traits in order to maximize our basic resource economy from our leaders. We've been making lots and lots of unity and that will enable us, as long as we stay at 100 empire size or below, to fire our agendas early at very low cost. It would take 42 months here to finish finding the voice. Instead, we're going to spend 900 unity, which is less than a couple of years of unity production, to fire that early. And that gives us a massive bonus to our unity here for an extra 37. Following finding the voice, we're going to go for leadership conditioning. This one is going to mean all of our leaders get more experience, great, but when we actually trigger it, every leader between level one and four will gain a skill point. Now it says that we won't finish this for 116 months. That is a lie. We're going to try and finish this around year 13 or 14, possibly slightly earlier if we can manage it. We'll do that through a mixture of high unity production, as well as keeping our empire size below 100. The way to keep our empire size below 100 is to push on into the aptitude tradition and finish administrative insight. That means per governor level, we'll get minus two empire size, so we'll keep to a nice small empire. Just to demonstrate the difference between being above 100 and below 100, because it is massive, here we have leadership conditioning. I could launch it early for a total of 39,800 unity. At this point, I am above 100 empire size. Let me take administrative rights, and I'll play the game for just a moment to end out the month. That's dropped my empire size down to 93. And now because I have 10 empire size less, the cost to launch this agenda has been halved. That is simply bonkers. Make sure whenever you're launching your agendas early that you are under 100 empire size. This build uses features from quite a few different DLC. If you're looking for more Stellaris DLC, now is the time. Until July 31st, there is a sale on at Humble Bundle with 75% off the base game Stellaris and up to 50% off other DLC. If you'd like to get your hands on some of these great discounts and support this channel and charity, follow the link down in the description below. Don't forget that every five years your leader will update and that means you can grab more leaders with resource traits. Don't be afraid of going over your leadership capacity a bit. That that will increase your leader upkeep costs and reduce leader experience gain, but honestly, we don't have to worry about it. At the moment, I'm only paying 16 for my additional leaders. That is because I am getting a minus 50% leader upkeep reduction before that modifier. So 
I have a base of four unity upkeep on this leader, minus 50% down to two, and then the 33% only affects the final number, so that two gets a 33% increase. This is coming from my enhanced memory trait, along with my preventative maintenance. For my second tradition here, I've specced into Prosperity 1, just to reduce the cost of all of my additional buildings. I am somewhat dropping the ball, I do need to go faster and build more research labs, pushing up my research as fast as I can. On my other colonies, I've gone for a bit of pop growth and unity, and that's the same across the board. We'll take another look at the specialization of these colonies just a little bit later. We're now at year 14, and I can fire my leadership conditioning agenda early at a 30 month early date for only 600 unity. Make sure before you actually trigger this, that you hire all of the leaders which have level 1 or level 2 traits that you would like to upgrade. By this point, I've also finished Aptitude, granting me more leader capacity and an Ascension perk. Wildly, Imperial Prerogative is basically the best Ascension perk you can put in at this point as a machine. It grants us more leadership capacity and a 50% reduction in Empire size from our colonies. As a machine empire, we're getting a plus 50% empire size from planet's negative modifier already, so in order to stay below 100 empire size and get the minimum cost for that agenda, we will need to take imperial prerogative. Just checking my income from leaders before I fire this agenda, we have 40 energy, 88 minerals, 12 alloys, and three unity coming from only our leaders. Triggering it means I now have a lot of work to do, upgrading all of my leaders to better levels. We are doing this now to grab every single resource trait we possibly can. That has boosted my economy to crazy levels. I'm now making 160 minerals, 144 energy, eight food, 24 alloys, and 13 unity just from my leaders alone. For my next trick, I'll be taking the military buildup agenda. That will be reducing my ship build cost by 20% and my ship energy upkeep by 20%. So when it finally comes time to build ships and go to war, I'll be getting some massive economic boosts to my empire for all of my military. Had I managed to trigger that leadership conditioning slightly earlier, I would have taken favored society for some fantastic economic boosts of 5% complex drone output and eventually 20% resources from jobs on the capital with enough time left to finish military buildup before I need to build ships. Unfortunately, I have been slightly delayed with this run, but in your run, I'm sure you can manage it. I can now set about removing all of the useless menial drone jobs, look at all of these additional wasted drones I have, and put them into other buildings. Coming back to look at these colonies, I basically specialized both of them in getting additional research labs. Later on, as I get nearer to war, I will start building a bunch of generator districts because as a machine, I can simply swap over my drones from things like calculators into energy production when I need it for fleet upkeep. I started by specializing my capital in research, but now I'm pushing it into being a forge world. We're getting modest alloy production here, but I'm sure we can get that number even higher. As a second ascension perk, I'll probably recommend we get transcendent learning. That's going to give us additional leader capacity, reducing the impact from having so many leaders in terms of our experience gain and our unity upkeep. I've hit year 27 now. I've got a comfortable 17 to 18,000 alloys saved up in the bank. The rest of my economy is basically chugging along a little bit. I can move some jobs around though because I do have lots of open roles like tech drones and miners available for when I need to shift my economy around and deal with this war. I fired my military buildup. I've got some other ship cost reductions, meaning I can churn out one destroyer for only 172. Let's try and build some fleets and see how big we can get. Here we are, just a month or so shy of 2230, and we've managed to build 125 destroyers with tier 2 disruptors. That is counting up to a total of 37,000 fleet power. These numbers are pretty darn bonkers, and none of it would be possible without the massive economic boosts we are getting from our leaders. From this point, we have such overwhelming fleet power, we could subjugate pretty much the entire galaxy without firing a single shot. And if they resist, well, we can start firing some shots and overwhelm their defenses in a matter of years. I don't know how long we're going to be able to benefit from these massive economic buffs from our leaders, but I imagine it's going to get changed in the next month or two, perhaps with patch 3.9. 
because at the moment this leader build is really damn broken. If you've enjoyed this Stellaris build video, but you'd like to see a full galactic conquest with all the bells and whistles, well I have not one, but two arms metaphorically tied behind my back, click the video on screen now.